what can we do in the new school which is different? And here I want to talk about some work that we're doing in Scholar at the moment, which if you like is inspired by Benjamin Bloom, but uses a very different set of methods to what uh, Benjamin Bloom, Bloom suggested. So I'm going to take you into the, the analytics um, app in Scholar. Firstly, I'm going to show you the old analytics map, and then I'm going to show you a slide of the new analytics app, which is about to be released. Now I'm going to move over to the analytics area to illustrate this point about uh, there, there not needing to be inequality of uh, outcomes in an educational environment. So what we do in analytics is we constantly data mine all the activity that's going on in uh, communities, uh, in publishers. So communities is uh, the community space, publishers monitors the, the project and the peer review space, surveys. So this is a bit of an overview of my activity here. But when I go into one particular project in one community, um, what we have here um, is an example that I want to show you of um, uh, a clinical cor correlations course in veterinary medicine here at the University of Illinois. This works exactly the same way if it's kids writing essays in schools or doing science projects in schools from grade four and above. Um, it's just a, it's a generic kind of data mining environment, but in this case, what was happening is that there were four, uh, four cases that students were looking at of animals that needed attention of one, one sort or another, and in fact there were 130 students in this class, and they produced multiple versions of their work, and you can see here that they, they were sometimes writing one, two thousand words often of work. And in fact, by the time this project was over, there was a million words of activity in this. So what we've done is we've data mined all activity. One of the important technical points is that Scholar has no documents, it has no files. That's the enemy of data mining because it's pretty well inscrutable. We've kept it everything as very, very carefully structured data. And we're able to tell the percentage, for example, the percentage edited across versions. So um, to what extent have the students taken board feedback, revised their work. Um, we're able to look at the academic language level, which is the level of technicality of the text. Now, that's not so relevant in higher ed, but it's certainly relevant in schools. Uh, we're able to look at the average peer review rating. So let's say there were three reviewers across six different criteria. And what we've shown is that the, uh, the, the average peer review rating is pretty close to what an expert would rate. But look, an interesting thing happens. Red is a standard deviation below the norm, green is one above. See here, by the time they've done their self-review of the final version, they're giving themselves pretty high scores and with some justification. And that, and that is because they've been giving and receiving feedback and the work of the poorest students has, has improved along the way. That's not to say that the work of the good students hasn't also improved, but the difference between uh, the unevenness at the beginning has been slightly evened out because students have seen drafts of each other's work, uh, they know what comparable good work is, um, they've got detailed feedback uh, along the way. This is the average publisher review, so publisher is a kind of a technical relationship to the thing, you know, this is the, the publisher is the person who creates projects in this area. So the publisher is in fact the teacher here, and the publisher, you know, the teacher in fact publishes the work finally to the, uh, to the, student, um, to the student portfolios. And this is the, um, the average overall, uh, overall rating um, across all of those different criteria. The number of re reviews authored, so we're going to value um, the work that you've done in contributing to other people. And look here, people have been writing several hundred words in reviews for each piece of work, the number of annotations, and what we do off 20-something data points, we create an overall score. So we get a very rich view of what's happening. Again, look, across this many students and this many words, and this supports the, uh, the professor or the teacher or the evaluator in the assessment process. And what's interesting is if you look at it, the, the the results are not, you know, they're scattered all over the place. You can run this at any time during a project to see where students are up to um, and go and let's say this student needs a bit of attention, go and talk to them or contact them. Um, so it gives you a kind of an overview. And this assessment process, you know, as I say, it's continuous. You can run this these analytics any time. Now let's say we want to go down and see why this score is here. 
Well, we can go down and we can look into an individual work. We can see the original work version one, the change work version two. We can analyze the differences, the green bits of things that have been added, the red bits of things that have been deleted. We can look at the, that's the change version. We can look at review one uh, there. We can look at review two here. We can look at review three here. And we can look at the review criteria. And that's just comparing version one and two. And in fact, we have an enormous amount of data here uh, that we can analyze, and we can get into it very, very quickly. So instead of this classical um, assessment scenario where you know you get your assignment back, it's B+, plus, uh, you've been a bad person, you're going to promise to be better for the rest of your life, um, we've given an environment where you can get enough uh, feedback and sufficiently concrete feedback from your peers and from the professor who's on top of what's going on or the teacher who's on top of what's going on and um, such that um, your work can be brought up to standard before you've got B+. There's no reason why we can't push everybody um, in terms of that normal distribution curve, everybody in the direction of what Benjamin Bloom would call mastery.